This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been here waiting for you. And today, we're going to return to 2 Timothy chapter 3, where the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, begins to describe events that are going to transpire in society at the very end of the age. And since you and I have been tagged to live in the very end of the age, we need to know what the Holy Spirit said, not so we'll be scared, but so we'll be prepared to deal with whatever happens around us. And my friends, if we'll pay attention to the warnings of the Holy Spirit, we will really be prepared and we'll know how to protect ourselves and our loved ones from falling into the pitfalls that are going to ransack society at the end of the age. And that's why I want you to order the entire series, which is called Last Day's Survival Guide. My friends, God has called us to survive the end times and not just to survive, but even to thrive. And that's why there's a Bible with boots on the cover. My friends, we're going to stomp through this age in power with the Word of God, and we can do it. But I want you to order this series with a study guide, and the study guide is just enormous. And the reason I love to recommend the study guide is because when you read, and when you see or hear the information, you're putting it into your eyes, you're putting it into your ears, and you're getting it into your heart. So please order both of these by going online today. And we're also offering you my book right now by the same title, Last Day's Survival Guide. The foreword is by my friend Perry Stone. The subtitle says, A Scriptural Handbook to Prepare You for These Perilous Times. I really love this book. It's 453 pages and it is loaded with insight, with revelation, and every chapter ends with action steps for you to take in response to what you have learned. So you can also order this by going online or by giving us a call. And please remember that we want to pray for you. And the moment we hear from you, we're going to release our faith and Jesus is going to do something mighty for you. And you can reach out to us by going online or you can give us a call right now. But today I want to read to you two testimonies of someone who reached out to us for prayer. One person called who had been diagnosed with enzyme levels that were out of range and a fatty liver. She was believing God for her healing and called to ask us to get into prayerful agreement for her healing. She specifically requested prayer for an upcoming doctor's visit to have blood work done and an ultrasound done on her liver. Today, she called back to share that test results came showing that her liver is normal and enzymes are within range. Her doctors don't understand why her liver went back to normal, and she told them she knew the reason why. It's because we have been praying and God healed her. What a testimony. And I know there's a testimony waiting for you too. But hey, listen to this testimony. One partner called to report that she had lost her husband due to death and she'd been struggling with depression. But she says Rick's teachings have set her free and she's learned how not to allow the enemy to oppress her. Since reading Rick's book, she feels free and strong and she prays that this teaching from Rick that has broken bondage off her will break it off of others as well and they too will feel life and freedom again. I just love these testimonies. And if you have a testimony in response to us praying for you, please share it with us. We want to hear your testimony. But if you have a prayer need, call us right now or go online. And as soon as we hear from you, we're going to begin to really pray for you. But today, go to your Bible, get something to write with, get a piece of paper, and we're going to return to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we're going to begin in verse 1, which is very fundamental to this chapter. In the King James Version, 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. But listen to the RIV of this verse. The RIV says, You emphatically and categorically need to know with unquestionable certainty that in the very 
very end of days, when time has sailed to its last port and no more time remains for the journey, that last season will stand in the midst of uncontrollable, unpredictable, hurtful, treacherous, menacing times and will be emotionally difficult for people to bear. What a description of the times which we're living in today. But today we're going to pick up in verse 4, which we covered in the last program. And in verse 4, the King James Version says, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. But let's go back to the whiteboard. And again, thank you for letting me know that you're enjoying the whiteboard. And on the whiteboard, I've written the actual Greek text from the New Testament. So let's go there. The Greek actually says, prodotai. This is the word for traitors, or as I've told you before, it really describes fair weather friends. In the end of the age, friendship will not be what it once was. Then it says propates, which is the word for recklessness. It describes people who at large enjoy violence. They're known for violent behavior and violent entertainment. What a description of the day that we are in. And all of these are plural, which means this is not going to be an isolated incident, but rather this is going to be widespread among humanity at the end of the age. And then you come to this word, tetufomenoi, which we covered in the last program. It also is plural. And this is very important because, again, it means this will not be an isolated incidence, but whatever this word tetufomenoi means, it's going to be widespread. And I want to read to you from my notes because this is so very important for you to understand. This word tetufomenoi is from the Greek word tufos, a word which depicts one who is puffed up with himself, particularly with pride. One who's puffed up and clouded by his own view of self importance but importantly, it is where we get the word for a typhoon. And this is very, very important because the Holy Spirit is telling us at the end of the age, it may feel like a typhoon has blown in. Well, you know, when typhoons come, they look dark, they look ominous. You can feel the wind blowing and people begin to battle down the hatches and hide. And the Holy Spirit is saying at the end of the age, it will almost seem like a spiritual typhoon is on the horizon. It's coming in. But here's the good news. They blow in and they blow out. And my friends, the devil might try to do his business, but we are the kingdom of God. We're the winners. But I would translate this last part of the verse like this. They will become full of pride and inflated with a sense of their own self-importance to the extent that it may end up feeling like society is being hit by a typhoon. However, those menacing winds of change will eventually blow out like a storm that comes and goes. Say amen. That's good news. Oh, the gospel is filled with so much good news. And the Holy Spirit wanted us to take heart that evil will not reign. It will blow in and it will blow out. That is a prophetic declaration. But then the King James Version goes on to say, they will be traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And that leads us to this next phrase in the Greek text. The word philodonoi is a compound of two words. It is the word phileo, which means to love. And it is from the word hedone or hedonos, which is the word for hedonistic pleasures. When you compound these two words together, and again, it is plural, it describes a society at the end of the age who are simply going to be filled with a nonstop pursuit of making themselves happy. And I want to read to you from my notes on page 312 from my book, Last Day's Survival Guide. This word Philodonos, that's the word we just looked at, which is a compound of phileo and the word hedone. The word phileo means love. The word hedone means pleasure. The word hedone is the root for the word hedonism, which denotes individuals who give themselves to the unbridled and unrestrained seeking of pleasure of any type. Thus, when you compound the two words together, philodonos, which here is translated as lovers of pleasure, it means to live for the fulfillment of one's pleasure and pictures people who are completely preoccupied with their own self-gratification or people who make personal happiness their highest aspiration in life. It's amazing. And this phrase, 
tells us that people at the end of the age will be obsessed with a nonstop pursuit of pleasure or happiness. Now, there's nothing wrong with being happy, but my friends, I want to tell you, happiness comes and goes. And if you're just on a treadmill seeking happiness, 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 you're going to be pursuing it for a long, long time because it's fluctuating. Happiness is temporal. You know what we need to pursue? We need to pursue obedience. When you obey God, you have joy and joy supersedes happiness. But at the end of the age, people are going to be prone to just constantly seek another thrill, another gratification, something else to make them happy. And the verse goes on to say, lovers of pleasure, philodonoi, rather, and here we have the word malon. What does the word malon mean? The word malon is a Greek word which here means more than or more than what is compared to and the word involves the ranking of comparison with something else. And in this case, the higher and more important priority over the lower and the less. And this verse particularly says more than lovers of God, which is the word again, phileo. And the word phileo means to love or to have an affection for and plural from theos, which is the word for God. Notice it doesn't say that they will not love God. It doesn't say that. But it says at the end of the age, if they have to malin, if they have to compare which is most important to them, their actions will show that they have a greater affinity for pleasure than they have for God. That's really what it means. Lovers of pleasure more than in comparison to their actual love for God. Then you come to verse 5. And in verse 5, the Paul goes on to say, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. But notice he says, having a form of godliness. Well, I want to read to you from page 329 in this book, Last Day's Survival Guide, because it is so important. Notice it says having. The word having, here is the Greek word ekantes. It is a form of the Greek word echo, which means to have, hold, or to possess. So at the end of the age, there's a large category of people who really will have, they'll hold, they will possess a form, a form of godliness. The word form that is used here is so very important because it depicts an outward shape or form. And it actually states that many in the last days will have all the right words and forms in their religious practices, but these same people will lack the power of God because they will deny its operation. We'll come to that in just a moment. But notice it says a form. I compare this to a mannequin. And in fact, I call people in the end of the age spiritual mannequins. You say, Rick, what in the world do you mean by calling people spiritual mannequins? Well, listen to this. Let me begin by using the example of a mannequin. Today, mannequins nearly look human. Some are so developed that they would outwardly pass for a real human being to a casual onlooker. I actually had an experience when I was in the store and I bumped into what I thought was a person. I turned around to apologize. It was a mannequin. But today mannequins are so developed, they really look like people. Outwardly, they have the right form, but they're empty. They're nothing more than a shell. And here the Holy Spirit is foretelling that some religious groups at the end of the age will externally have a form of godliness, but they will lack the inner power that godliness really produces. And the word godliness is the word Eusebius. This is very, very important. The word Eusebius denotes piety or religiosity. The outer form which they will have may include clerical clothing, religious styles, religious actions, religious phrases, religious symbols, and other external religious trappings that people usually associate with those that are religious or those who are pious. But listen, here the Holy Spirit is saying that there will be people at the end of the age who possess all the right external paraphernalia of godliness, the right words, the right symbols, the right actions. They may even wear religious clothing or have a cross draped around their necks and a Bible in their hands. They may even have a strong social media presence with pious sounding posts. But these people will be like spiritual mannequins dressed up in religious clothing, having the right outward form, but lacking the inward life-giving power of 
God. So just imagine for a moment if you saw a mannequin. And there is that mannequin in front of you, all dressed up like it is a minister of the gospel or a Christian. It's wearing what we would call Christian clothing or clerical clothing, has a big gold chain wrapped around its neck, hair is combed right, it's got a big Bible in its hands. Outwardly, it looks like the real deal, but the fact is, it's just a mannequin. There's no life. It is just a shell. It is devoid of life. And here the Holy Spirit says at the end of the age, there really will be people who have the right outward form, but they will be inwardly empty. They just have a form of godliness. Paul was prophesying by the Holy Spirit that a time would come at the end of the age when some, not everybody, but some within the church would dress themselves in religious paraphernalia and look the part, but like mannequins, they will be empty shells that are devoid of the power of God. Wow. And in fact, he goes on to say that they may have a form of godliness, but... The word but here is the word day. It's very emphatic. This is like an exclamation marker. But the power, here you have the word dunamon, which is a form of the Greek word dunamis. It's talking about the power of God. But the power of it, the power of real godliness, the power of the gospel, they will deny. And notice again, it is plural, which means this rebuffing and rejection, rejection of the power of God will be widespread at the end of the age. All of this is in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And listen to this. This word denying in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 5 means to deny, to disown, to reject, to refuse, or to renounce. And it literally means a time will come. And my friends, it's already happening. It's all around us. A time would come when some spiritual leaders will reject and rebuff the genuine operation of God's power. And when confronted with a true power of the gospel that can transform lives, these defecting individuals will reject God's truth and instead embrace a lie. I just think that is amazing. And the fact is, listen to this, many traditional denominational churches were born in revival and they were birthed, pioneered by men and women who embraced the teachings of the scripture. But today, in order to meet the new cultural norms that exist in modern society, some of these denominations have gradually moved in the direction of modifying the gospel whenever needed to better fit in. And as a result, a watered down gospel is being promoted in these last of the last days. It is a denomination or groups that marginalize sin, does not recognize the need to repent, but instead they propagate a false gospel that suggests the real problem with human beings is just psychological or medical, and it can be treated by acceptance, inclusion, right conditioning, medication or a surgical procedure. My friends, they have moved so far from the gospel that even though they are outwardly dressed in all the trappings of religion, inwardly they become an empty shell and they actually stand against those who stick with the truth of scripture. They reject it. They rebuke it. They refute it. And the Bible tells us what we are to do with these folks. It says from these apo. Trepo. What in the world does apotrepo mean? Well, you need to know what the word apotrepo means. It's translated turn away in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. But the word apotrepo is a compound of two words. The word apo means from. It carries the idea of a turning. The word trepo, which really means to turn. But when you put these two words together, it's very important, really important, because the word apo implies the idea of distance. It's a turning and putting a distance between yourself and something else. When these two words are compounded, it means to turn away from and depicts a mental, spiritual, or physical turning. And the Greek tense used here is so strong it cannot be misunderstood. The Holy Spirit is commanding us in this verse to mentally and spiritually and physically turn away from any spiritual mannequins that may have the right outward trappings but who stand in opposition to the power of God. And because the word apotrepo also depicts a physical turning. It means if need be, we must physically turn away from and oppo put distance between ourselves and these individuals. Now that is amazing, but that really is what this means. 
while there is so much in this verse. And the RIV of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 would read like this. Although they may possess an outward form of religiosity, they will rebuff, refute, refuse, and reject the authentic power that goes along with genuine godliness. So I urgently tell you to mentally, spiritually, and physically turn away and remove yourselves from such people. Now, before you become too judgmental of others, I want to tell you how this text affected me. Rather than me think about all the people that are spiritual mannequins, I found my heart crying out, saying, God, I never want to be a spiritual mannequin. I never want to be accused of being one who has dressed in all the right religious trappings, but doesn't walk in power. Let's focus on ourselves and make sure we really have the authentic power of God operating inside of us. And if we become trapped with people that have just become mannequins, it might be time for you to obey the scripture and put distance between yourselves and those individuals. But hey, I've got more to share, but I'll be back in just a moment. Someone asked the question, did Jesus ever address UFOs? Well, that's a very fun question. And the answer can be found possibly in Luke chapter 21, verse 11, where Jesus is describing signs we will see at the very end of the age that we're living in right now. And he says, there will be great earthquakes in diverse places and famines and pestilence. And listen to this, fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. And that word from in Greek is the word apo, which describes something descending right out of the heavens. Jesus did not explicitly say these would be UFOs, but he did say at the very end of the age, there would be things appearing out of the heavens. So did Jesus address the question of UFOs? I don't know. You decide. But my friends, that's a pretty interesting verse where Jesus did foretell things would descend out of the heavens at the end of the age. What are the signs that we are living in the last days? How do we survive the crazy times we are living in right now? In this 15-part series, Rick Renner dives into the Greek New Testament to show you how to navigate these stormy end-time waters. Join Rick at the whiteboard as he visually opens key secrets to clearly show what the Bible says about the crazy times we are living in. Rick will teach you what the word perilous means, how society is prophesied to go berserk on many levels at the end of the age, how the legal, educational, and entertainment systems will become armed against the righteous, how to navigate this end-time storm. This is a series you'll want to share with others, and it is available in digital or physical format starting at just $24. In addition to this 15-part teaching series, you can also order Rick's book, Last Day Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. This book will show you how to protect your family, your children, and your grandchildren from the evil being spread through media, education, Hollywood, and the courts. With the help provided in Last Day Survival Guide, you will learn how to walk in victory regardless of what is going on in the world around you. Today, we're offering this incredible book to you for just $27. Don't miss this powerful offer. Order the bundle of the series, Last Day Survival Guide, and the companion book, Last Day Survival Guide, a scriptural handbook to prepare you for these perilous times. Call the number on your screen or visit renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and I'm so excited that today I can come to you from our Tulsa, Oklahoma headquarters building, and I'm standing in the production department where we produce so many resources for people who live all over the ends of the earth that reach out to us for teaching that they can trust. And I know that's the call of God on our life. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many, and our job is to feed many the wonderful word of God. And right now, we're wanting to retire the debt on this building so it frees up funds so we can take the Bible to further places across the world. And if you're already a part of our giving team, thank you so much for being a part of the giving team. And if you're not, would you please pray about joining our giving team to help retire the debt. I realize people may not get excited about retiring debt on a facility, but to me it's quite exciting because then it's gonna free up all those monies so we can take the teaching of the Bible to more people across the planet who really need it. And think about it. 
here I am standing in the midst of just one aisle in this big department filled with all kinds of products that is really going to change the way people live and the way that they think. People need the wonderful Word of God. So again, if you're part of the giving team, thank you. And if not, please pray about becoming a part of our giving team so we can take the transforming truths of God's Word to people all around the world. And together, we'll retire the debt on this building and it will free up finances so we can reach those that are crying out for answers from God's Word. After hearing today's program, if you feel you need somebody to pray with you, please reach out to us. We're waiting for the phone to ring right now. We're just waiting for your call or send us an email. The moment we hear from you, we're going to pray with you and we're going to pray for Jesus to meet the need in your life, whatever it is. And I want you to remember that we're offering you my series called Last Days Survival Guide. It's 15 parts. It comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you the book by the same title called Last Days Survival Guide with a Forward by my friend Perry Stone. I want you to have this book. It will equip you for the times that we're living in and it will give you action steps to take in response to what you're reading or what you're seeing. But Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that we could be together today. Help us, Lord, to make sure we never become spiritual mannequins. Let the power of the gospel operate in us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to be back tomorrow. But until then, remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. Denise and I are going to be coming to the United States, and we're going to be ministering in some churches. And if you can join us, please try to come to one of the following meetings. Sunday, January 21st, we're going to be with Pastor Mark and Tasha Bentliff at New Creation Church in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. On Sunday, January 28th, we'll be with Pastors Mark and Rhonda Garver at the Cornerstone Word of Life Church in Madison, Alabama. On Saturday and Sunday, February 3rd and 4th, we're going to be with Pastors Jim and Ann Freeze at the Joy Church in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. On Sunday, February 18th, we'll be with Pastor Frederick Price Jr. and Lady Angel Price at the Crenshaw Christian Center Faith Dome in Los Angeles, California. And on Tuesday and Wednesday, February 27th and 28th, we'll be with Pastor Jerry Moore at the Word of Life Church in Miami, Florida. I cannot begin to tell you how happy Denise and I would be to see you in one of those meetings, but please go online for more detailed information. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.